Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Hell ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I'm officially back in Minneapolis. I had a good old funky time in North Carolina and shout out to everybody that I got a chance to see and run into and all the tea sippers down there. And last but not least, I got to shout out my tea site. Make sure you guys check out lovelytea.net. We are also on Amazon. Make sure you check it out for all your tea sipping needs. All of the hair and nail tea have since been restocked and so has the skin tea and so has the men's tea as well. So make sure you guys check out lovelytea.net. So anyways, y'all, I know why you guys are here. Everybody and their mama wants me to talk about this Nicki Minaj situation that, that went down yesterday on social media. When I tell you Nicki Minaj had everybody named Mama trending on social media yesterday, okay? She was trending, Safari was trending, Jessica Dime, DJ Self, Mariah Lynn. It was insane what happened. And like I tell y'all all the time, this channel is not about being first. If you guys wanna watch people who are about being first, then clickbaity. Go and subscribe to their asses, okay? I don't do that here. My channel is about sitting back, sipping tea, and gathering all the facts and receipts and putting it together in a beautiful package for you guys, okay? So I wanna go ahead and talk about everything that went down. I wanna break it down for y'all. This video might be kinda long, so make sure you guys have y'all's tea cups because y'all already know this video is about to be what? Piping damn hot, okay? So anyways, it all started when Nicki Minaj decided to go onto the Funk Master Flex show on Hot 97 and she decided to talk about everything. She wanted to speak about, you know, Safari and him telling the world that he was her ghostwriter and then, you know, the Nicki Minaj hate trend and just all the stuff she's been going through. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch these video clips really quick. Check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. So fucked up that everybody on the inside of the industry knows that I write my lyrics and knows that I that I put so much um, weight on women writing. And then for one person to do something like this to me out of sheer weakness and passive aggression and just hatefulness and vindictiveness. I don't because you because you got caught shitting on a person that was taking care of you for years and years because you got caught shitting on a person who was taking care of you uh -huh. while you were paying for prostitutes and doing all types and stealing their credit cards and doing all types of dumbass shit. Um, hold up. <laughs> hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. How you go? Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. No. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me to take him with me to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I came to New York to get my clothes. Mm -hmm. He asked me to take him with me. How dare you bite the hand that feeds you? Mm -hmm. He had a job in Atlanta for one day. He came back home and said he doesn't want to do that job. I said, mm -hmm. don't worry. I had $1,000 in my bank, bank account. I said, don't worry. I'll figure out a way to get our before rent paid. Before album deals, before everything. Before everything. We had no couch. We had no bed. We had, our mattress was on the, was on the uh, uh, carpet. Mm hmm Instead of going out there and working, he decided he didn't want to work. And I said, it's okay. I'll figure it out. I'll book a show. I know. Love. It. Yeah. Love. This is love so, involved. So it, it. if anything, he should just be thanking God that he now has an opportunity to make uh, to make money and to make a way for himself. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have had this opportunity had I not pushed my pen. He told me to stop trying to pursue rap. He told me that I was living in a fantasy world and it would never happen. Him, those. his we mother, and his stuff. sister called me a lazy bitch because I was pursuing my rap career. I think as time went on, uh, what was bothering Safari was coming to the surface. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I, I feel so, I think it's sad that my culture turned on me when I put so much. During then? Yeah, oh. be, uh, with my writing, my writing, I've always been adamant that not only I write my own raps, but that I want all women to write their own raps. But you and know there's a lot any, of rappers not writing. It doesn't matter about what they're doing. My but, thing is just because a I mean? woman, just because uh, I'm a woman. But I'm not just because you're a woman. I think so if, uh, so if I was a man and a man came out and said, I've been writing their raps, you would have believed them? No, you wouldn't because um, you would think. I got to wait. I, I got to jump in. I did believe when 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 some some reference tracks came out, I did believe that. Re listen to what you just said. Have you ever heard any reference tracks about me, but you believed no. it because I'm a female? No, wait, so wait, wait, no! If you didn't hear reference tracks wait, from Drake, wait, wait, if you wait. didn't hear reference tracks associated with Drake, Drake you would have never believed it. Correct. I'm a woman, you're right, so you are right. I want to say right, yes. Thank you. So yes, there's a right, double fucking right. standard. Yeah, there is I've a... written every fucking rap of my whole career. I do, agree, that I do agree there's a double standard. Yes. 
I agree this Wait, is double standard. Why is it so hot? I know, I know. Open that door. Yo, it is I do blazing. Believe, I do believe this is double standard for the music, yes. So all I want to say is shout out to the people who knew better all along, who <laughs> held me down all along. Yes. Okay? Shout out to everybody who can listen to Queen and hear my 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 skills, my ability. I hear it. Oh, okay. I do hear it. Thank I do you. hear it. Well, you want to know when I, when I really took the writing thing out of my head? When? 100% when I when? did? When? Dreams, the, the the Barbie dreams. Oh come on! One hundred percent. No, I did. Let's I gotta be on. honest. Knock it off. That knock was a song off. for me. Let's knock it off. Knock it off. Barbie dreams is not even a lyrical fucking record. No, you but think because I wrote Barbie. No, you, you, you know what? On. I felt that the energy that you gave on that song gave me a couple things. One that you're aware of. The Ask Meek. Now you gotta think about this. I was, I, me and Meek were together for we messed around for a couple years, and then we were together in a, an official relationship for two years. Hold on. Don't speed over that. Hold on. No, I just want to say this part, but I want <laughs> you to really, I want everybody to really think. I'm in a relationship with a rapper. Mm -hmm. Okay. At some point, if I don't write my raps, and I'm in the house with this man, and and I'm writing and recording all the time, he has to, he would have to find that out. He would have to True. know that. Absolutely. I would be in bed writing. Like the Pink Print Freestyle. I don't know if you guys remember when I took a little time off of the internet and I came back and put out the Pink Print Freestyle over MASB. Tough. Meek was the, his, all his friends used to be, Meek was the one, um, I think Meek was on house, house arrest at the time. I was laying in bed the whole time writing that and he would just keep on coming back inside saying, you finished, you done, you done, you done. I wouldn't even let him hear my raps until I was done. And then I would read them back to him. And and down in the DM remix, remix, same thing. You, you talked lyrical. I really want your opinion. I really want your opinion. I'm not okay, like, my, I'll like, tell you what of of the reference. When you when when you heard the Drake reference tracks, what was your opinion? If you even heard them, you say I gave you a little out, but I'm not though because I know you heard them. What, what I'm think? let me tell you something. What I I said this I said this on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Drake writes for himself and others. If y'all think that Drake don't, I mean, give me a break. Let me tell you something. I don't think every, he doesn't write. I don't think he does not write. Okay. That's so not, every, every that. single rapper has had someone lay a reference track for them or something and said, here, I did an idea for you. I did a hook for you. It's up to you as an, as an artist what you take and what you don't. But that, that happens with everyone because people go in and do hooks and some people will put something in there. Well, that's allowed in the game. Of course. From, like a hook, of couple course. bars, hook idea, change of something course. up in the studio. That's, yes. that's un those are like unwritten rules of being okay. I he's can. not a person, he's not a rapper that doesn't write. Right. Uh, um, I think, um, I don't think he doesn't write. You know, I think maybe I felt, um, I, I, just, I just never expected uh, yeah, but every rapper, but Flex, track. every rapper, every rapper has from the great, the, all of them have come out and said, "Yo, when we all in the studio and we writing and we and we recording, we niggas to say two lines here and there, and you like, oh, that shit is hot. That's whatever. Everybody, that period, period. Yes, honey. When I tell you, Nicki Minaj's ass went off, okay, and like I said yesterday on Instagram. I was here for it. I'm glad that Nikki finally got to tell her side, got to speak her piece. Now, if you guys don't know this, like I stated on Instagram, I was one of the few people I can always admit, you know what I'm saying, when I'm wrong in a situation, I can always come back and bring receipts. I'm not one of those people that will sit on a lie or continue to let a lie keep forming, continue to ride with a lie just to shade somebody else. I know a lot of you barbs think that I had some type of vendetta against Nikki, that I hate Nicki Minaj. The barbs who have common sense know that I will always take Nikki to task when she's wrong, and I will also have her back when I see that she's right, okay? So back in 2015, Safari was on this whole hobo tour, basically telling the world that he had wrote Nikki's raps, and that, you know, he's the one who was behind her creative genius, and he basically helped her and that he was going to sue her. And I talked about this in 2015, and I honestly did believe Safari at the time, and this was my video from way back then. Go ahead and check this flashback really quick. And I feel like Safari played a big part in making Nicki Minaj who she is. And if he wrote any of her music and he has proof, then he should definitely be receiving royalties for that music. You know, that's business. All right, so you guys just saw that flashback. Now, recently, before Nicki Minaj ever went on this rant yesterday, 
I had found out that more information came out in 2017 and 2018 where Safari was confronted by an interviewer and they asked him flat out, did you write her music? It's one thing to, you know, throw in an ad lib or to throw in a verse or say, you know, you should put this in there or take this out. But it's another thing to take credit for writing her music. And when they held his feet to the fire, Safari had to admit that he did not write her music. And what did I do? When I found that information out, I made sure to put it in an updated video, not even two months ago. I'll go ahead and check out this recent flashback where I had Nicki Minaj's back and I blasted Safari for lying on her. Check this out. Now, for a long time, Safari did put it out there that he was the one helping her write her rhymes, but then later on, he came out and admitted that he lied. Sometimes, like, you might say lines and shit, and you might be like, yo, my, here's my question, and you could just put yes or no. Mm -hmm. Have you written any whole entire verses or songs? No. Then there you have it. That's from a rapper standpoint, that's what he's saying. Cause you could you could be like, yo, remember on line, yo, yo, here, this say this better, or do that. Niggas do that ev like every rapper has that. Mm -hmm. So we you know, and I've like I've known Nicki. Oh, that whole situation irritated me because for so long, he's the one who discounted Nicki Minaj and put that out there that he was the one writing her rhymes when in actuality it wasn't necessarily true, okay? So then all right, honey, so you guys see me talking about this two months ago before Nicki Minaj ever went off yesterday on the radio station, okay? So now a lot of folks are just trying to figure out what's going down, why did everything happen? So the reason why I believe that Nicki Minaj was snapping on Safari is this, okay? Now you guys know I did my review at the Hotel in North Carolina while I was reviewing the um, Nicki Minaj album, Queen, and I really loved it. I loved the majority of the songs, but when I talked about the song that she put out called Barbie Dreams, I said in that video, I was like, Safari's so definitely gonna be feeling some type of way because Nicki Minaj shot so many people out but never made mention to Safari, okay? So shortly after that, Safari took to Instagram. He basically tried to insinuate that the song may be about him. This is what Safari had to say. And before I go there, I want to go ahead and shout out Shelby Cobra. Me and her had a conversation yesterday on Instagram. And I kept telling her I'm going to go ahead and break down to her why I think that Safari is trying to make this situation about him. Y'all stop dragging her. Y'all leave her alone. Me and her talked in the DM. We have no issues with each other. There's no beef. She was just somebody stating her opinion. I was rebelling bubbling her and that's all there is y'all leave her alone okay she's a sweetheart so anyway so shout out to you so what went down is that basically the next day another one of my subscribers who's also a barb top shot of 05 was in my dms and we were talking and he was sending me some stuff that safari had wrote on instagram and then a video that safari did with shiggy and basically me and him were talking about this situation so i'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what safari wrote on social media check this out okay so the same day that Nicki minaj's album dropped that saturday Basically, Safari took to Twitter and he was like, okay, so y'all blew me up about Come See About Me. So I went and listened to it. And whether it's about me or not, that shit had me crying like a bitch. I don't think it's about me, but the song is nice. I was in a perfectly fine mood before I heard that. Thanks a lot. Then he had an angry face. My thing is this. I feel like this. Safari knew what he was doing by trying to even implement that it could possibly be about him he says whether it's about him or not why even say anything why even try to attach yourself or anything to this song even if people are saying safari what's your opinion what do you guys think about this he didn't have to say anything so i feel like him even trying to imply and him even trying to insinuate caused some feelings to be stirred up in nikki okay so now if that wasn't bad enough he then posted this video, him and Shiggy, they posted this video together of Shiggy supposedly creeping up on Safari and seeing Safari supposedly stalking Nicki Minaj's page. Go ahead and check this out. Yo, this nigga here sneaking on Nicki page. Yo, what you doing, my boy? <laughs> Who page is that, my boy? <laughs> <laughs> Who paid All right, so you guys just saw that video. So to me personally, how I took that, that initial tweet and then the whole Shiggy video situation, to me, I took that as Safari kind of being thirsty and trying to once again attach himself to Nicki Minaj when he did not have to. If he's doing his own thing and he's blessed and he's making money, there's no reason to even put up a video like that. There's really no reason to acknowledge her because at this point in time, they're exes, so leave it alone. So I think because Safari did all that, 
I think that really got under Nicki Minaj's skin. And that's why she went off because she's like, you know what? When Pink Prep came out, you was running all over social media, acting like you had something to do with the album, acting like you helped write. And now I dropped the Queen album. We're not together. You weren't in the studio. You have nothing to do with this. So you shouldn't even mention this album. But the fact that he's trying to throw subliminals and he's doing these videos with Shiggy, I think that's what really pissed her off. And I think that that was the final straw for Nicki Minaj. And that's why she went off in the way that she did, okay? After Nicki's interview with Funkmaster Flex went viral, when I tell you, Nicki Minaj and Safari got into a heated Twitter debate. They went back and forth so much so they ended up dragging Tiger into this, okay? It was then announced by Nicki and Safari that not only did Safari get his hairline done, which is not a secret, he's been talked about this, but that Tiger also got his hairline done as well. And Tiger being a good sport that he is, he took everything in stride. He did not let it bother him. I'm gonna go ahead and post you guys these tweets, these comments, this back and forth between Nicki Minaj and Safari. Y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary.
This entire situation's a hot damn mess, but you know what? I'm here for it, bitch, okay? So anyhow, after those tweets and that back and forth went viral, Charlemagne the God also decided to insert himself, and he was basically asking Safari, you know, well, how much were the plugs? And, you know, why y'all getting this type of stuff done to y'all's hair? And then he said that if he was to do it, would y'all still support him? Would y'all clown him? At that point, messy ass Azalea Banks comes into his comment section, and she says, yes, I will clown you. Don't do that. And then somebody named Kenny says, as Lily Banks left my ass off, you couldn't take a joke from Wildin' Out, don't start. And then after that, MTV's Wildin' Out replied back to him with eyeballs. When I seen that, I felt the hell out. Only Azealia Banks would get roasted in somebody else's comment section about some shit that has nothing to do with her, okay? Now that back and forth was super crazy, but I definitely believe that Nicki Minaj and Safari, they both hurt each other. Back in 2011, I did a video when I was initially telling the world that they were a couple. A lot of people did not believe me back then. I'm like, dude is not her hype man. Dude is her boyfriend. And um, there was a 911 tape that came out where basically Nicki Minaj was crying and saying that Safari hit her and busted her in the face with like luggage. And she was screaming, saying, you know, look what you did to my face. Look what you did to my face. That is an old tape. You guys can look that up on YouTube. Um, but if you guys remember in the song Bed of Lies, she also put in that verse where she admitted to cutting him. And here goes that verse right here. Check this out. Fuck out, don't yell at me. I ain't mean to cut you. I ain't one to catch a felony. This ain't how to be a player. You ain't Bill Bellamy. All right, so you guys just heard that verse from Better Lies. So basically, Nicki Minaj admitted to and confirmed everything in that song that Safari was saying that Nicki Minaj did cut him and that they had to lie so that way she wouldn't get hit with a felony. So like I always said, there's two sides to every story, his, hers, and the truth. And Maury's ass decided to get involved and even offered to give them both a lie detector test to get to the bottom of the fuckery, okay? So this entire situation was insane. It had social media lit yesterday. So now, that's not crazy enough. Nicki Minaj also got into it with DJ Self. If you guys don't know, DJ Self is from Love & Hip Hop New York. He's the one who was initially working with Cardi B and he dropped the ball with Cardi B. And now he's been struggling for relevance ever since, okay? So what allegedly went down is that Nicki Minaj went to go visit DJ Clue. And she's saying that when she was there, she ran into DJ Self. And DJ Self wanted her to do a drop, wanted a hug, wanted a shout out. And Nicki was like, basically no, because she had heard that DJ Self was low-key throwing shade at her and stuff like that. So she basically declined everything. And then afterwards, DJ Self took to his show. And then after being in Nicki Minaj's face and kissing her ass, he then went on to his show and basically big up Cardi B and said that Cardi B was the best female rapper. She had the best album. And then also Dream Doll was on that show and they allowed callers to call in and basically roast Nicki Minaj and say little smart shit, okay? So here goes a small clip from the show the night before. Check this out. Hey, yo, Dream Doll. I will listen. We talking about. All right, so you guys just saw that small clip of their live stream. So anyhow, when word got back to Nicki Minaj, she took to social media and she went off. You know, maybe DJ Self thought that she'd be too busy promoting her album, that she wouldn't, you know, care. She wouldn't say anything. But she went in and this entire situation is crazy. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a back and forth between Nicki Minaj and DJ Self. And then after that happened, when I tell you damn near every damn cast member from Love & Hip Hop somehow got themselves involved in the fuckery, y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary.
All right, so you guys just saw Nicki Minaj and DJ Sels back and forth. And so like I said, um, after that, Jessica Dime, a.k.a. Jessica Two Nickels, like I used to call when I used to do my Love and Hip Hop ATL reviews, instead of sitting her ass down somewhere and breastfeeding her newborn daughter, she decided to jump into the fray and, you know, get in her feelings and say, you know, why are you talking about Love and Hip Hop chats being crummy? We all started from somewhere. The only folks who use Love and Hip Hop for relevance are people who have no real talent. They have really nothing going on in their lives because people who respect themselves themselves would not you know allow themselves to be pimped out on a show like love and hip-hop okay so jessica dimes aka jessica two nickels decided to jump in and this is what she had to say about the situation and then on top of that dj sells protege dream doll and mariah lynn who are both fucking him okay they also decided to jump in and soon after that the barbs drug all of them mariah lynn got drugged so bad that her number leaked online and she was posting up all the text messages and death threats that she was getting from the barbs this entire situation was a hot damn mess go ahead and check this out All right, so you guys just saw the back and forth on what the girls had to say. Now, my thing is this. Both Mariah Lynn and Dream Doll both need to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up. I'm trying to figure out what DJ Self has ever done for them. The one chick that he really could have done something for, he dropped the ball on Cardi B, okay? And since then, every other chick that's been under his roster, the only thing he's done is gotten some ass, okay? I haven't really seen a lot of popping music from them. And now, let me say this. Mariah Lynn can actually rap. I do have some of Mariah Lynn's music, and I do enjoy some of her music. Music, okay I'm gonna keep that all the way real but as far as her going mainstream as far as her blowing up like a Cardi B she has not seen that and then for her to kind of be in her feelings is kind of comical because just the other day she was rapping to Nicki Minaj songs not once but twice y'all go ahead and check this out yeah you've been sick yeah you've been pressed I'm the princess Nike on your jaw get your chin chop Honey, you was just a fan a week ago, okay? So now on top of that, Ra Ali got involved, Brooke Bailey got involved, and they're both friends with Nicki Minaj, and they decided to have her back, and they went in. And it's on side! It's on side! on side! <laughs> and they also told Jessica Dime after she was talking shit and telling Nicki Minaj to have the same energy, they were basically telling Jessica Dime to shut the fuck up and make sure that she has the same energy when she sees Nicki Minaj. Also, Bianca got involved, and she's from Love & Hip Hop New York, and she basically reiterated the same thing I just said, that Mariah Lynn was just dancing and rapping to Nicki Minaj's beat and song just a week ago, but now she's trying to call herself coming for Nicki. Y'all go ahead and check out these tweets and these Instagram posts right here. Thank you. 
All right, so you guys just saw those tweets from Ra Ali and Bianca um, basically going at Jessica Dime. Now, a lot of people are saying that Nikki's fronting, that she knows who Jessica Dime is because Jessica Dime was an extra in her music video, and you can clearly see her right here. Just because Jessica Dime was in a music video with Nicki Minaj does not mean anything, okay? A lot of artists hire extras and, you know, models and things like that and dancers. I was one of the dancers in her music video, okay? That does not mean that Nicki Minaj has to know me by face or by name. So people using that Jessica Dime was in Nicki Minaj's music video as an aha moment to say that Nicki knows who Jessica Dime is, that's a really weak argument. But I want to point this out, just because you work on set with the celebrity or with the entertainer does not mean that they necessarily know you personally or that you guys have a personal relationship. It's a business relationship and as long as Nicki Minaj cuts that damn check, I'm good, okay? We ain't never got to be friends. We ain't never got to talk. None of that shit. You may have watched on Love and Hip Hop, but I'm sure she's not checking for her like that. And at the end of the day, I highly doubt that either one of them will really run across each other. And if they do, there's not going to be any fisticuffs thrown. So Jessica Dime is running her damn mouth. And Nicki Minaj is just trying to be about that life on Twitter. But in the real world, we all know they're not going to fight or bust a grape, okay? Okay, so now if that wasn't crazy enough, Dream Doll was still running her damn mouth. And this time she was saying that the reason why Nicki Minaj is pressed is because DJ Self was cool with Dream Doll and that Karen Civil told her this, so they ended up dragging Karen Civil into the mix, and Karen Civil went off about the situation. Y'all go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw that back and forth. So while all this was going on, the only thing that Meek Mill wanted to know, he wanted to know the tea. He wanted to be put up on everything because I guess he was living under a rock yesterday or he had to go meet with his damn PO. But he wanted to get an update on all the fuckery, okay? So now if that's not crazy enough, another thing that went down is that while Nicki Minaj was going off on DJ Self, she also threatened to bring some goons to the radio station. And at that point, DJ Envy's emotional ass decided to take to Power 105 to say that all the DJs in New York should ban Nicki Minaj from the radio because of her threatening DJ Self. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this Breakfast Club clip. This entire situation was just a hot damn mess. Go ahead and check this out. I, play. Mm. I just don't like the threat. Like, like you know, you know, Nicki can have an opinion on self self can have his opinion on nikki but when you start saying i got hungry n words that's gonna come up there now that's that's yeah, that's no, the problem so, so all the are all the that's don't the problem that. are all the djs gonna form like voltron and stop playing our records i don't want y'all to absolutely do i'm gonna have a conversation with self first i'm gonna have a conversation with self they're being honest on the microphone i don't care you don't threaten no dj over over his opinion now, if, if if self says something foul and disrespectful, then yeah, it's all good, but not over his opinion. <sighs> if his opinion is this, and then all of a sudden you're going to send somebody to come see him, nah. But I'm going to have a conversation with self. All right, so you guys just heard what DJ Envy Scary Berry Ass had to say. First of all, DJ Envy, I'm going to need you to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up. This whole boycott of Nicki Minaj's music is only coming out because Nicki Minaj did not give The Breakfast Club that interview. Had she went to The Breakfast Club, he wouldn't have gave a fuck about DJ Self getting threatened, okay? They have rappers on their show all the time who threaten people, who rap about killing other black folks. But yet and still, DJ Envy has no problem with that. He does not say boycott any of these black male rappers who sit here and threaten each other on social media, who sit here and act a fool, you know what I'm saying, who have even confronted him and Charlemagne on the breakfast club Sammy, I knew a few places you was at I could have pulled up but I don't think that was gangster I wanted to come look in your face like a man and tell you how I feel okay you understand me straight up like a man so no what's shit, the issue no sugar. ain't no issue if it was an issue you, you'll feel me I just come to let y'all know stop put some respect on my name you understand me? When y'all saying did, my name, put some respect on it. Did you, did you pull up on Ross that way? The trick daddy? Man, I'm pulling up on you, nigga. 
He's never threatened to boycott any of these people. But now that it comes to Nicki Minaj, he wants all the DJs to boycott them. To me, this is self-serving. He's just in his feelings because Nicki Minaj decided to do an interview with their so-called enemy, Funkmaster Flex, okay? Had she not done that interview with Hot 97, DJ Envy would not have gave a damn, okay? It's only because she went to Hot 97 and gave them that exclusive that he's all of a sudden in his feelings, that he's all of a sudden the moral authority, and all of a sudden he's now against, you know, DJs being threatened and everything else. You know, where is the same energy when male rappers, you know, act a fool and they do things that are unbecoming? You have nothing to say about that. But now when it comes to Nicki Minaj, you want her music banned from the radio? Boy, bye. The only thing you can control, DJ Envy, is yourself. So if you don't want to hear Nicki Minaj's album, if you don't want to support her album, the next time you do a house party or you do a club event, then at that point in time, you have the right to choose not to play Nicki Minaj's music, okay? But while you're on Power 105, you have absolutely no control of that and her music will continue to get spins on your radio station because you're not the owner, you're an employee, okay? So now if that's not crazy enough, what went down today is that basically DJ Self is now speaking out. He's talking about the entire situation. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this DJ Self clip. He talked about this on the radio this morning. Go ahead and check this out. And she asked me, Self, can you put out a video of you playing my record? And I obliged to it and I did it. You know, I felt like she's from New York City. I'm going to support her. Um, other than that, I've never had any other conversations with her uh, uh, at all. So she came up to the radio station and we had to cross paths because I was in her walkway. I said, hey, Nick. She said, hey, back. Then after that, proceeded to do her interview with DJ Clue. I also walked off because I was there earlier because I had a meeting. So I walked inside my meeting away from their interview space. So to paint a better picture, we could not see each other nor hear each other the whole time. An hour and a half into my meeting, DJ Clue walks into my meeting and asks me, hey, do you got issues with Nikki? And I said, uh, not that I know of, why, what's up? He said, cause I was doing my drop list and when it came to your name, she declined to do your drops. Ha, ah, well guess what, joke's on you, Jack. Nikki ain't messing with you. Later on that night, she started to tweet a lot of lies saying hey i'm going to tell the people about the conversation that you had about her and i was weird because i'm like i i never had a conversation with you about a her or even a him like we would had no conversations ever at all it was it, it fell in line with the other lies about me asking her for a hug and asking her for a drop which was weird and I, I, the only thing I could come up with is maybe she came up with this fictitious lie to say, say something that, that has some substance. So let me spawn a, a, a fictitious story about self telling me something about a, another female rapper, which never happened, which was weird to me. Try state, listen to this. I never had a conversation with her about any female rapper. I never asked her for a drop. I never asked her for a hug. And still to this day, I do not know what her issue is with me. You will never win with a back and forth with a female, especially someone who's more popular than you and got more followers and engagements. I understand that. So this will be the last time you hear me even speak upon this. Salute to the boy DJ Envy. Salute to the whole Power 1051 staff for standing front with me against these allegations and lies that were brought upon me. Especially when we had about 30, 40 witnesses up here who saw the whole thing happen anyway. But salute to my whole Power 1051 staff for standing up with me. And uh, listen, it's all about the music, man. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And it's all about making great music and fun times. So I salute all MCs from North, South, East, and West. Salute to all you. Make some good music so we can play it up here at Power 105.1. And it's never, ever, ever cool to threaten someone or mean bodily harm to another person. I also know when tippers are flaring, people say things that they don't really mean.
All right, so you guys just heard what DJ Self had to say. And I know a lot of people are saying that they believe him. You know, Nikki's delusional. She's crazy. But in my personal opinion, I'm not believing anything that comes out of his mouth. Until those other people come out and they can co-sign what DJ Self is saying, I'm not buying any of that. Because let's not forget, this is a man who lies time and time again. Even when Cardi B was on the show, she confirmed that DJ Self was a liar. Go ahead and check this out. One thing I don't like about Self though is that he be lying. I hate that. All right. So you guys just saw that old Cardi B clip. Like I said, something's not clean in the buttermilk. Both stories are vastly different. But I do also have to give DJ Self the side eye because he's been caught many, many times on that show lying about bullshit. And then also what's crazy about this situation is that DJ Self's own daughter, his own flesh and blood, Kayla, who was also on the show, she's about 16 or 17 now. She's even thrown her own father under the bus. She made a video yesterday basically rapping to Nicki Minaj's songs. <laughs> Calling out her father and, and she says this is how I look knowing I'm not the only queen that thinks he's trash. Then she proceeds to post a picture of both of her parents. Her mom looks to be Asian. As we all know, DJ Self has a type, but his daughter is gorgeous. She looks like a beautiful mixture of the both of them. And then shortly after her post went viral, Nicki Minaj started following Kayla. So like I said, if his own daughter, his own flesh and blood is willing to throw him under the bus, if Cardi B was calling him out when she was on the show years ago, and he's been proven time and time to be a liar, I can't take his version of the events 100% until other people verify DJ Self's story. I'm taking it with a grain of salt, okay? Like I stated before, I'm happy that Nicki Minaj is finally standing up for herself. She's speaking her truth that she sees it. But I also have to be honest, I also feel like a lot of this drama, a lot of her going off on social media, this is being done to help promote her album, to get folks to run out and buy, to get folks to, you know, pay attention to her music. Controversy, no matter how good or bad, is good controversy controversy and it also equates record sales because ever since she was trending yesterday people have been running to buy the album people have been running to go check her out and let's not forget when cardi b debuted her album she got a lot of hard copy sales she broke a lot of records and i think Nicki minaj is definitely trying to do the same so however she can do that she's going to do that and also let's not forget her mother mama carol also did that interview basically defending her brother. So I also feel like this is another way to help distract from that embarrassing ass interview that her mother did over the weekend. She's trying to make it about the album. She's trying to make it about, you know, all the drama and all the stuff that she's been through. So folks can focus on that and not focus on the whole situation with Jelani. So I feel like there's some ulterior motives to why all of this is happening. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that Nikki spoke her truth. I'm glad that Nikki called out Safari because like I said before, I also called him out for lying on her you know she made a lot of good points in that interview i don't like the way that funk master flex interviews i feel like his interviews he cuts her off you know he starts you know reminiscing about back in the day he goes on these long ass conversations about nothing as opposed to making it about the interviewer after a while it seemed like Nicki minaj was interviewing funk master flex okay so i enjoyed the interview but i really wish it could have been with a different interviewer now last but not least i do want to address the safari situation where he came onto social media and he stated that Nicki Minaj stabbed him and he almost lost his life. And I also showed you guys the lyrics. Um, I also want to basically denounce the domestic violence. I saw a lot of people making excuses for her and saying, oh, well, she's a woman. He's just lying. Men go through domestic violence as well. And I believe that there was abuse in that relationship on both parts. I feel like he also put his hands on Nicki per that 911 call. And Nicki has also done things to him per, you know, the stabbing incident that she sang about in her song. At the end of the day, I feel like their relationship just became very toxic near the end. And they're both better apart than they were together. I think he's doing better on his own. He's doing his own thing. He seems to be in a better space as far as, you know, music-wise. Um, but I do want to denounce that because I saw a lot of people making excuses and making it seem like it was okay because it was a woman abusing a man where we know damn well if Safari would have stabbed Nikki, all hell would break loose so let's not make excuse for domestic violence and also know that if you are in a domestic violence situation regardless if you're a male female gay or straight 
get out, get help. Just remember that it's never okay for somebody to put their hands on you. You know, so this entire situation is a hot damn mess, honey, but I want to go ahead and cover everything for you guys from start to finish. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire messy ass situation that went down yesterday. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. <laughs> Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.